All right, so this is part two of uh, creating the title block. And in part two, what we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, some tags. So on the create uh, tab, we're going to, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to put in some labels. And um, what that's going to allow us to do is that when we load this finally into a project file, then all somebody has to do is click on that label and edit the label, and then it, uh, it, it uh, changes that on every title block that you add in from that point on. So it's going to fill out these parameters. So these parameters all all except for file name, all of these parameters, including sheet name, scale, and sheet number, all exist in your typical Revit project file. Um, and so uh, it's going to. So what we're going to do is there's a tag built in for each one of these, and um, and what we're going to. So so that's easy. So but for this file name, we're going to have to create our own tag. All right, and that's where we're going to get into shared parameters. So once I get to that point, I'll kind of explain what shared parameters are. It's actually a really good function of uh, of Revit, but it's a little bit difficult to kind of understand why and and uh, and what it actually is. So um, I'll explain a little bit more about what that is here in a second. But let's start out with uh, project name. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start adding these labels in. So to get those labels, we're going to go to the Create tab, and then we're going to go to Label. All right, so I'm going to click on Label. All right, and what these are are basically just um, uh, text that allows uh, Revit to plug in parameter information into that. So, for example, when we when we did our project, uh, we did our Ranger Station project. We already filled out. We already told it what the pro what the project name was, um, Ranger Station project, uh, or, or you know, or Carol's Ranger Station, or something like that. We already put that information into the project file. So when we load this project, or when we load this title block into that project file. What it's actually going to do is Revit's going to actually plug in that information into this label. So this label, if you think of it as a cup, you basically fill water, you know, you fill information into it and pour information out of it. You know, so Revit is basically going to plug in the project name parameter into that label. Does that make sense? So okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on there. All right, and I'm going to first look at what we have as far as labels go. We only have one. It's called tag one. All right, so I'm going to go to edit type. Let's see how tall this thing is. Yeah, it is uh, a quarter of an inch. So we, we need to create a new one. So let's do that same process again where we create a new type. I go edit type, duplicate, and we're going to call this um, Arial Tag 1 8th. Or say, yeah, Arial Tag 1 8th. OK, and then hit OK. And then all I have to do is just change that size, so eighth inch, and then hit OK. All right, so then uh, I'm going to just drop in my first tag here. So I'm going to just click right underneath project name. All right, so this is going to be our project name label. So click there, and you should get this. It says edit label here. So what you're doing is you're, these are a series of parameters over here, and you're going to look for project name in there. There it is, project name. All right, and then I'm going to push it over into the into this label. All right, so what I'm going to do is I select project name from the the list, and I hit the little green arrow. Bless you. And then uh, so that plugs it in over here. And then what this is is this is the sample value. So that's just basically the placeholder value for it. When we plug it into the project, what Revit's going to do is then change that from project name to uh, Ranger Station project. Okay. So project name. Yep. Sorry. Question. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, so let me, so what I did was I went to label, click on there, oops, sorry, yeah, label, and then click on, like, click underneath project name, this dialog box should pop up, yeah, okay, all right, so project name, all right, so we'll know which one is the, um, is the label, because it's the one that's lowercase. So what I want to do is I want to line it up with project name over here with my static text. So I'm going to slide it over. So if I just select it, and then you'll get that move command. Like so, so I select it, and I move, roll my cursor over the top of it, I get the move command. And I can slide it over, and it should align with get the blue dash line so it aligns with my project name. All right, And then I can kind of fine tune its location up and down with my arrow keys just to kind of get it in place there. So you just kind of fine tune it with those kind of things. All right, so then we'll go to project number, create, label. All right, click right underneath project number. 
and then slide it over. All right, hit OK. All right, so there's my label. All right, and then move it over so it lines up with project number. Give it a couple taps so it's up there. And if it also helps, I mean, if you guys want to, this is kind of totally up to you, but if you want to add lines underneath each of these so that you don't mix the information together, so that if you had a line here that separates project name, the static text, and the label, you could do that if you want. It's up to you. All right, let me do issue date, create, go to label, drop a label in. All right, so this one is actually called sheet label. I'm sorry, sheet issue date. I'm sorry, project issue date. So project issue date, and then slide that over and say OK. All right, and then let's move it into place. All right, so then you're going to kind of go through there and then drawn by, so on and so forth. Sheet name, let me do sheet number real quick. So I go to create, label, all right, put a tag in there. And I'm going to go, this was called sheet number. I'm going to say OK, or sorry, slide it in, slide it over, say OK. All right, so sheet number, it's a little bit small for our sheet number. So what I'm going to do is actually switch that back to tag one, which was a quarter of an inch, to make that a little bit bigger. So select that, go over here to the type selector, and let's go back to tag one. That makes it a quarter of an inch, so that makes it a little bit bigger. So with the sheet number, you do want it a little bit bigger, so it stands out a little bit more. All right, one thing, too, to, to, uh, uh, to think about when you're doing this is um, when you're typing in this, uh, in, when, you're act when you have this in your project file and you're typing information in here for your sheet number, um, you don't want this little boundary here, this little boundary box here. Basically, that limits how far that text will go over. So, for example, if my text were way out here, and I just kept adding characters in there, it would kind of extend off the page. So what you want to actually do is make sure that these guys are all pulled inside that line. And what happens was, is when it gets to, when you start typing information and it gets to this point right here, it does a carriage return and then comes down and creates a second line right below it. So on all of these guys, make sure that these lines don't extend over that project because then it'll, will, it will extend that, uh, that information right off the page. Oh, uh, for uh, for sheet number, what I did was I went back to tag one because remember the original tag was a quarter of an inch, so um, and quarter of an inch even seems small. I mean, you could even create a new one that's three eighths of an inch. So I'll say um, three eighths inch Arial, and then make it three eighths of an inch. And that's that's a pretty decent size one. But just make sure that the, when you've selected this little boundary here to the right is inside that uh, your uh, borderline. All right, so then the last one that we're going to do, because um, the rest of these are pretty self-explanatory, scale and sheet name, you can do those on your own. But um, I'm going to go to file name, and that's where we're going to have to create our own one. So I'm going to create, label. All right, I'm going to give that Arial tag 1 8 And if you scroll through here. You do have one that's called file path, but that's file path. That's like where it's located on your project. What I want is actually the file name. So um, what I want to do is I'm going to create a new one. So it says add parameter. So then I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to select that. And you'll get this box here, parameter properties. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a shared parameter for this one. All right. It's down here. This little um, There's like a little spark in the corner of a page. All right. So I go select. All right, so what it says here is it says you have not specified a shared parameter file. You, uh, do you want to choose one now? So what happens is uh, shared parameters are basically a file that's outside of Revit. It's actually a text file. All it is is just dumb text. Um, and what it is uh, is um, so we're going to have to create our own shared, uh, shared parameter file. So let's do that now. So we'll go yes. All right, and we're going to go create. So we're going to create our own shared parameter file. And I'll explain kind of what it is here in a second. So put this shared parameter file in a place where you're going to find it. Um, so you're going to want to make sure to put it on your U drive so it doesn't get erased. All right. And so I'm going to put it on my U drive there. All right. And we'll call it shared parameters. 
Okay, so I have one from last semester, so I'm going to call mine shared parameters too. All right, and notice it, the file extension is text, txt file. So, okay, so what essentially it is is a shared parameter file is. Um, let's say you're creating windows and uh, let's say you're creating doors in your project and you're doing this in a in an architectural office or something like that and you're creating a door schedule and so doors have uh, a certain amount of parameters we've created door schedules right and you can add whatever parameters you want for those doors now in some cases you're going to want to add parameters into those doors right there may be something like hardware set um, the hardware is basically the locks and things like that for the door the closer all that kind of stuff. And each door is different, right? Because the front door is going to have a different hardware set than, say, an office or a closet door or something like that. So what you do is you write out what, you know, hardware types and all that kind of information. So you would want to have a parameter because each door is going to have a different hardware set. Um, so you want to create a new parameter called hardware for your doors. But you've got maybe, I don't know, six or seven door families. So you want to add that same parameter to multiple families over and over and over again. That's where shared parameters go, comes uh, comes into play, because essentially what it is is you just select one button and say add that hardware parameter, and it does that, and it just puts all the information that it needs uh, into that family, and uh, that's really crucial because if you get one thing slightly off in that information about that hardware family, it's not going to work for that hardware family, and you're going to spend you know a lot of time going back in and trying to to get all that to work. So that's where shared shared parameters comes in, shared parameters is a text file that you can just reference whenever you need to create a parameter in multiple families that you want it to be the same parameter that everything, you know, kind of syncs up. So that's where shared parameters comes in. So you have to, um, so that's what we're going to do for our title block here. I have to create that, that file name parameter. I have to load it into my title block and maybe in the future I'll load it into other title blocks but um, I also have to load it into my project file so they have to sync the two up so you have to sync the file name uh, shared parameter for, with the title block with the shared parameter and we have to create that also in the project file and we have to make sure that they sync up so that's why we're going to use this shared parameter thing okay so I'm at this stage here alright so the first thing we're going to do I've created my file already so that's my text file here and we're going to create a new group. All right. So group is basically you can group these shared parameters into like door parameters, window parameters, title block parameters. So our first group here is going to be title block. All right. And assuming we were going to create, you know, five or six different new parameters for title blocks, we're just going to create the one. So I've got a new group. All right. Primer group title block and we're going to call this new parameter. So I'm going to create a new parameter in that group. All right, it's going to be called file name. All right, and then it's discipline is common. That's good. All right, then type of parameter you want text for this one. All right, if you put in length, if you keep it at length, it's always going to expect a, a, a you know feet or inches or something like that. So let's go to text and say OK, and then OK, and OK again. All right, so then we've got file name. So this is the new parameter that we've created, file name and text, and say OK. And now notice it puts file name into that uh, that list, and now we can push it over and say OK. All right, so there's our new parameter, our new shared parameter, file name, and I'm just going to set it in place. Oh, select it, and then go up to types, uh, uh, type parameters, and do you have Arial 1 8th? Oh yeah, just yeah, just dial it over, just select it, and then dial it back to uh, one eighth inch aerial. And so, as far as the other parameters I'm missing, you guys can add labels in for sheet name and text and all that. So I'm gonna just kind of call it good for right now for this guy. So I'm gonna hit save. All right. So the thing I want to do now is then load this into my project file. All right, so I'm going to load this title block into my project file. So I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to go to the big blue R, and I'm going to say new project. All right, and we're going to do architectural template. So this will be the project file that you guys create for your families. Okay, so I'm going to say OK. All right, I'm going to step back real quick, go back to my project, or my um, template family. I'm going to say load into project. All right, and you'll get a little error message that says can't create this kind of element in uh, the current mode. That's because I need to. Uh, I'm in a plan view, and so it can't create a title block in a plan view. 
Well, oh, uh, if you went to... Yeah, so if you hit this little thing here, you can kind of go back to that, that project file. I just used a shortcut. Um, Control-Tab will take you to the last view that you were in. So Control-Tab's a little shortcut to get there. Alright, so then um, let's create a new sheet. So our, I loaded my title block, that new title block that I put in here, and uh, we're going to create a new sheet. So I'm going to go down to Sheets, right-click, New Sheet. Alright, and there's Brett's title block right there. Alright, so I'm going to say OK. Alright, so then it created a brand new sheet here. So I've got sheets. I've got this brand new sheet here. Alright, and uh, I've got all my uh, parameters in here. So if I double click on project name, I can edit that. Alright, project number. That's good. Project, uh, project number. That's good. Alright, so I can edit all those guys. Now file name, you'll notice, if I select the sheet, I just get this little question mark. I have to load that parameter into, the, into my project file now in order for that thing to work. So what I'm going to do is I go to Manage. All right, and we've got, um, let's see. So what I'm looking for is, uh, I think is it shared parameters that I have to load it in? Yeah. All right. So what I'll do is I'm going to go to uh, up here to manage and I go to shared parameters. All right. And I'm going to browse until I find that uh, shared parameter file. I just created that little text file and say, okay. And oops, hang on. I think it's project. For, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. My bad. Uh, that was wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Instead of shared parameters, we want to go to project parameters. Sorry. That is, that's if we wanted to create pr shared parameters within the project file. What we want to do is actually go to project parameters. All right. And what we want to do is we're going to add a new parameter into this project. So I'm going to say add. All right. And what we're going to do is instead of creating a project parameter here, what I'm going to do is use go to my shared parameter file. So we could create new parameters from this point right here. We could just call this one, um, uh, I don't know, um, playground equipment. You know, if I wanted to create a, a new parameter. But what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a parameter using our shared parameter file that we just created. So let's select this guy here. Shared parameter, and then I go to a select. And what I'm going to do is it looks like it's already loaded that shared parameter file in here already. So I'm going to go to title block, file name. All right, so that's the that's the uh, parameter that we just created. And it's going to say OK. All right, and then we're going to group it under text. So that's good because it's just text information. Now the last step you have to do is you have to put a category. You have to give it a category over here. So I'm going to scroll down here, and I believe there's one in here called title block, if I'm not mistaken. URS, okay, sorry, maybe it's sheets. The sheets in there? Oh, there it is, yeah, there it is, it's in there, it's just kind of hidden. So, I want to say select sheets. All right, so we loaded in our shared parameter called file name. It's grouped under text, it's under the category of sheets, and then we hit OK, and then OK. All right, so you know to to fill this guy out, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to select the title block and click on the question mark. You can't see that question mark if the title block is not selected. So just select the title block, look for that question mark, and then I'm going to call it file name, and it's Brett's family file or something like that. Should all be caps. Sorry. or whatever you call that particular file, but you just kind of type in the file name there. But that's basically it. So that's how you create a shared parameter um, and uh, load it into there. And so that's how you do that with, like, a, say, a door. So the most practical application that I can think of is with doors. Is if you're uh, creating shared parameters, you want to create multiple parameters in your door family. What you would do is then create that text file, which is that shared parameter. And actually, let's go in and actually open up that text file. If I go to um, my computer, And I go to my U drive and let's scroll down, find that text file. There it is, shared parameters too. That's basically what it looks like when you open it. It's just kind of dumb text in here, but Revit kind of interprets all that sort of stuff. 
um, and it puts all that information in there. And it even gives it a little little code there so that the, that it knows what it's talking about. So, um, so yeah, the practical application for that is, is that I would load that same shared parameter the same way into all my family files from all my f door families, and then I'd load it into my project file, and that way it would you know I'd be able to schedule that, um, and I'd be able to uh, fill that information out on my title block, and it all kind of syncs up with the rest of the project file. So, all right, so that is basically it for the title block.